What's up guys, John here. I'm Sharice. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. Awesome, good information that you guys can utilize. Honestly, whatever doesn't break you will make you stronger. That is the truth. Every week, if you don't know, we come up with these tips and tricks to help you guys enhance your relationships. I hope they all see this episode. Whether it's reigniting that passion or just developing a better, stronger relationship. We went through a lot of these trials and tribulations, so we wanted to give you guys the shortcut. I mean, you guys might even do this and not realize it, and your partner might be currently upset at you, so we might help you in that aspect. This is true. <laughs> so, we're going to... What's up, guys? John here with my beautiful wife, Sharice. What's up? And we're here for another Cupid's Corner. So every week we like to come <laughs> and give you guys some tips, tricks, things that hopefully will make your relationship successful or your future relationship successful. Um, things that me and her have in occurred uh, or things that we've really found out from our friends or people that, you know, or right, our parents. right into us or our parents, right? Mm. You never want to uh, repeat history over and over and over. You unless it was sure. really good. Yeah, unless it was good, I you guess. You can repeat history if it was good. Yeah, but you don't want to make the same mistakes. So yeah. That's the big thing. That's, that's insanity. That's what we really learn for our history. Insanity. Because, yeah, doing the exact same thing over and over and over <laughs> and expecting a different result is insanity. That is insanity. So <laughs> don't drive yourself insane and you and your partner, if you guys are doing the exact same thing over and over and over and you're expecting a different result. You're insane, so you don't want to be going to you're the loony crazy. bin. You're crazy. It's time to start something else or a new path Do to Do something go down. different, exactly. So uh, this week we want to talk about a couple of different topics, if we can make it in time. If not, we'll make it another show. But the first topic I think that we should talk about, and happy couples do this, mad couples do this, they talk about one thing, and that's another thing, is money, right? Mm. So, you know, money is a big one. Uh, it's a big one for happy couples or couples that are mad. And usually money is brought up um, because one person thinks money should be uh, one way and the other or person allocated to something specific. It or should be allocated to another way. Right, right. right. Um, now, this is, you know, fine and dandy if there's enough money to go around for what you guys all want to do. Right. But even in that circumstance or situation, there might be one person in the relationship that thinks that the money should be allocate into a different direction right, right. Um, and if you don't have enough money to go around you that also definitely, could be a very big fight that could be a big one and honestly that's a really really big one because it creates more stress on the couple obviously because yeah. you're like oh no how are we gonna pay for this pay for that right you know and then you find out that you know they they bought a meal at outback right for lunch you know that was 20 bucks but the 20 bucks could have been put towards the light bill Right. I mean, 20 bucks could have, I mean, you'd be surprised. You'd Absolutely. be surprised. You'd Absolutely. be very surprised. Even with inflation on the rise, trust yeah. me. You know, that that's a big thing. You know, people fight about money because, you know, one person thinks it should be allocated to one way and the other person thinks it should be allocated another way or, or spends the money. And then couples literally get into fights or arguments all the time about the exact same topic, which is money, right? Um, or, you know, at that point, um, they say, I'm sorry about not making enough money or we need to start saving. That's the most common response. You know what a, a big one is? That was, I mean, and I hate to put my parents on blast. So, and my father is no longer here. Bless him. But my mom is, so I apologize in advance because I'm sure she's probably watching. Um, but, you know, a big one was, you know, um, basically giving money to like a family member mm -hmm. that might need it. Mm -hmm. And then not uh, like asking your significant other if it's okay first mm -hmm. or sharing money with a friend or giving like because you might have that you might think anyway that you have this extra money that you can help somebody out with and you're just genuinely just trying to help them. Um, but let's just say that you're not communicating that communication again with yes. your significant other to make sure that it's okay with them. Because I mean, most of the time you guys are sharing the same bank account or it's going into one bank account and that bank account's paying all the bills, right? So you really should be making like a, the, you know, a decision together on what you're gonna be spending the money on. You know, me and John luckily, you know, when we had money, didn't have money, whatever the issue was, because we've been in both positions now, right. um, we still, always i mean especially with him being a man sometimes the man doesn't always check with the woman to say at or ask hey is this okay <laughs> especially if you know let's just say the let's say it's a stay-at-home mom or whatever it might be then there might be you know a, a, a power thing where it's like i'm making all the decisions you have nothing to say mm -hmm. and that's what it is mm -hmm. 
but it shouldn't be that way. No. You know, and he does. He respects me enough to even be like, hey, listen, what do you think about this? What's your input on this? Is this okay to do? Do You know, what about getting a new this? Or, what? you know, he just asks. So it's, you know, I think it's a respect thing, too, when it comes to that. But I really think that uh, that could be a huge issue right there, just just giving out money to family members that need it. Yeah. Because I feel like that's happened probably to a lot of you guys out mm-hmm. there. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tough predicament, too, right? Um, there's two sides to what she said. First is, is that, you know, uh, even if you're a stay-at-home mom, you know, it's a partnership. You know, mm-hmm. you're, that's a job, too. It really is. Right. Um, you know, so, you know, nobody should be putting you in your place about you staying home or whatever it is. As long as you're taking care of the house and you're doing, you know, doing, like, a job, basically. That's really what it is. If you're not and you're sitting home at bonbons all day and you have your feet <laughs> up and nothing's getting cleaned, there's trash all <laughs> over, uh, things are a mess, kids are all over the place. At that point, listen, there might be a conversation about you need to really start taking this serious. Or but not pull your the weight. Thing, right? Pull your weight. Yeah. Um, you know, at that point, you know, that's that's one side of it. And it should always be a partnership thing. You know, that's the other side of it. Everything that you guys do should be a partnership. And it really should include your spouse or a significant other. Um, that makes them feel more connected to you, more bonded like. Like, hey, listen, we're really a team and this really is a partnership. Right. Instead of feeling like an outsider or like, oh, well, they're just going to make decisions without me. Or what are, what are they going to do without my input? You know, that's that's another big one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it is what it is. There's a lot of families out there where, you know, one parent might think it's all right to do one thing. And one parent thinks it's all right to do another or might not think it's all right to do what you're, you're planning to do, <laughs> either by taking the kids, to, let's say, Disney or, you know, out for meals or whatever it is, because you guys may be struggling and every dollar does count. Right. You know, that's a big one. And then, you know, with, with people like, like I said about the insane thing, always saying, I'm sorry about not making enough money or, um, or we should start saving. They keep saying this over and over and over. But there's no plan in place to really take you to where you need to go. Mm -hmm. If you say you're going to start saving, you guys need to come up with a plan together. Hey, listen, every paycheck, we're going to set aside 20 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever it is. We're going to put it in a jar under the bed in a a separate bank account Mm -hmm. that nobody can nobody's supposed to touch and you just forget about that money and just keep stacking it up that way that's one good way to save i know that's what we and sharice did originally right um we started saving money in a bank account and we never touched that money we acted like it wasn't even there yeah it didn't exist because if you if you think it's there and stuff like that you'll you'll, you'll use it it. and you'll make some sort of excuse of why you need to use it right whatever it's for um and i'll put that money back in there later on and and that rainy day comes and you don't have that money there Right. Um, that's a lot of situations, you know, because you never can plan for a rainy day. If somebody really knew what was going to happen the next day, then, you know, they would be betting probably on all these different games or, or whatever it is a to lotto. make a whole bunch of different money, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been betting the lotto all day. If you, if you knew it was coming the next day, it'd be real <laughs> easy and real simple, and then we'd all have perfect lives. Yeah, But perfect. the you know, the thing to this is that nobody knows what's going to happen next. You know, right. we're all flying by the seat of our pants to a certain degree. There's certain precautions you can take, certain preventions you could take, but you're never going to truly know what's going to happen the next day. Right. So that's really where you should be prepared for a rainy day. And if you guys are on the saving tip, you guys should be saving together and setting goals financially of what you want to achieve. Whether it was like me and she's like, we want to get a house, right? We want to, you know, buy a business building, whatever it is. You guys should be on the same page about that, working towards the same goal, and things are going to be work a lot better. If you guys are both agreeing on it, there's going to be no fighting, and, and at that point, you guys can work together on it. Right. If you guys are fighting about money, you know, then you guys need to cool down and come together like an adult and talk about it. And then discuss like why is it that you're upset about this being allocated here versus this being allocated there. And then the next party needs to be able to understand, like let them speak. That's a huge one. Please listen to what they're saying and see what makes the most sense. And maybe, maybe you guys talking can actually come to some sort of agreement that, okay, this makes sense to do this this way versus this way. You know, sometimes you have no sense at all. Right. And that, that was my dad. My dad had no sense and he didn't listen. And he just, he just wanted to be a good dad. Right. So what would he do? We were living paycheck to paycheck. My parents live paycheck to paycheck, literally barely. Okay. And then, you know, we would do like, um, you know, he would take me right after school. He would take me out to Red Lobster and we'd go to the, do the endless bucket of crabs. Right. So we would go do this endless bucket of crabs. He'd go spend whatever, 50 bucks, which 50 bucks to us right then and there was like a million dollars today. Okay. Um, and you know that my mom would find out about it. And he was doing it because he wanted to be with me. He wanted to spend time with me. It was coming from a genuine place, right? 
But my mom would be pissed about it because she's like, you just went and spent $50 at Red Lobster that we don't have. And we, now we can't pay this, this, and this. And I mean, they would have screaming matches about this yeah. in the kitchen, yeah. right? And I'm overhearing like, oh my God, this is terrible. Yeah. You know, I'm so sorry I ate these crab legs. <laughs> I wish I just had McDonald's, but you know, it's, it is what it is. But you have some people that just don't listen. You know, my dad was one of those people. But you, you should take a second and just calm down. Don't hang your hat where you can't reach. You know, my mom used to say that all the time. And just, you know, really see what you have to spend. Sometimes you're overspending right. and you don't realize it. And when you do that, you go in a hole right. and sometimes that hole is very difficult to come out. It's really difficult to get out of. And that's, that's one big thing about money situation that you guys should talk about as a couple budgeting, right? Budgeting how much you guys are going to do for groceries. If you guys need to, how much you guys are going to spend on rents, how much you guys are going to spend on your mortgage, how much you guys are going to spend on whatever you do. Even if it's a trip, right? You guys are having some sort of idea of what you guys are going to spend. You guys mm -hmm. are trying to, you know, think it out and, and at that point. Now, listen, always plan for the, the curveball. Wait, the hold curve on. Ball. You got to give away. You, I have to bring this up. Remember, I got to bring up one real life scenario in every single Cupid's Corner. Okay. Yeah. Real life scenario. Us. We were still in that position where we really didn't have any money, like at yeah. all living really paycheck to paycheck. I'm working my nine to five, you know, doctor's office, da, 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 whatever. So, you know, we decided to plan this trip to Atlantis, right? And we budgeted this trip out, right? This trip was budgeted, right? I actually won the trip. So it was, but, but you know, you still yeah. had to, I think we still had to pay for the flight. Yeah. So I won the trip basically through my work for, because how could so it good. be, right? Yeah. <laughs> so at that point, like they paid for me and Sharice, like our hotel room. I think they paid for our flight. I'm not sure. I can't remember, but we they didn't and pay we for were, obviously any food or anything like that when you get to Atlantis. Um, curveball. Yeah, it's a curveball. Wait, here comes a curveball. Ready? Um, you know, so this is the first time me and Sharice were to Atlantis, right? I've been to the Bahamas before, but not to Atlantis. And, you know, at that point, like, all right, when you go to Atlantis, if you guys had not been there, you're going to pay, like, at least 10 to $12 for a hamburger. I'm a hamburger? About, I'm not talking about, like, a handmade like hamburger. $15 That's like $15 a for a hamburger? Pound. I'm talking about one of those cheap frozen patties, right? Like, yeah, and, you know, literally, I'm like, you know, we should, just, we should probably like just split bucks. this burger, dude, because yeah. I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, we literally don't even have the money for this right now. Because now after that, we need bottles of water. The water was literally like $10 yeah. a bottle. I'm so thirsty. Yeah. And now I have to pick if I want food or water. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, listen, we budgeted out for it. We had a, a decent but amount But it's a curveball. It's, it's definitely it a curveball. Curve ball. You know, it's, it's something you might not think of or overdo a little right. bit on your budget. So it's always better to under budget and see what that number be very conservative. That's one thing that I, I, I preach. Um, I think about, and it's one of my, my mantras, be conservative about things. Like really like, all right, if you think it's going to cost 13 bucks, you better plan for it to cost $20. And yeah. that way, if it costs, you know, 12 bucks, you're really excited. Hey, listen, you save that money. Um, and even 13, you're like, all right, cool. I was expecting that, but I was even planning for even more. And as long as you're underneath that number, it's going to be a home run of what you're thinking. You know, instead of thinking, you know, it's going to be perfect. Everything's going to be perfect. <laughs> and it's going to be $13. And then it goes to $16, $17, $18. Like, oh, my God. I didn't budget for this. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> this is just crazy. Like, I'm in this bad situation or scenario. Yeah. You know, and I think we've all been there to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. But the after effect is, is debt, right? Because once you don't have enough cash, if you're able to get credit cards, then you start running credit cards up. And then credit card debt starts falling. You and starts mounting the percentage of interest. And, you know, for me, even... They set it up like that. Of course. They set it up like of that. Of course. The Just house like always Scott. wins. Just right? like Am Scott. So it, the hamster wheel. Am Scott's the exact same way. You know, you get in the hamster wheel, you get the money. Get in there. Some people might need that advance because there might be an emergency. But that you up. have to pay. The, you're making the same amount of money unless you get a bonus, which never happens unless you work at time. Or you take another job. Right. And then, you know, you, you guess what happens? And you make the same amount of money. You got to yep. go pay your advance. And yep. guess what? You got to get another advance to cover that advance. And you're paying the percentages on and, top of the You're just top. stuck in the... It's a hamster wheel that you never stuck get in the out wheel. of. It's and terrible. you just keep going further and further and further, <laughs> right? And you're just paying them every week, you know? Even with, with credit cards. So, you know, even I think until maybe like 
four years ago, five years ago, I never believed in a credit card. Oh, he refused. Um, I, I, I'm the type of guy that, listen, if I can't pay for it cash, he I don't want it. He won't waste anything. Because I, I don't ever want to go in debt or, or have something happen and where I can't pay for things. Right. Um, you know, obviously the mortgage on the building that we bought, you know, is a whole different uh, expense or the house, which, you know, I'd like to pay off as much as possible. But credit cards, the only reason I got a credit card was for the benefits because we're spending so much money and this was coming right out of a debit. It was just getting taken right out of our bank account with no bonus to it. So at that point, that's what I have a credit card for. We spend it. I pay it off the next day. There's no debt at that point. And your credit goes up. And your credit goes up and you're getting the benefits from the credit. Yep. Um, you know, whether it's rewards or whatever it may be, cash back or whatever it is. So that's just a big bonus for people out there. So listen, if you guys are in a relationship, you guys want to start setting these goals for your financial future. And if you're not in a relationship, go forward. And if you have a bad credit history, try to clean up a little bit because you know that's the conversation that I think you should talk about too. Hey, listen, if you're going to get married or whatever it is, you should probably know their financial background. Do they are carrying a whole yeah. bunch of debt into the relationship that you're going to be, you know, maybe on the hook for later on? Um, this is just something that you guys should think about. Um, if you guys are in a relationship, plan it. Make sure you guys' future is a successful one financially too as well. All right, so I think that sums it up. That sums it up. That's another Cupid's Corner. Guys, check us out every Sunday, 11 a.m. on ABC. If you miss it, YouTube, Titan Medical Center. That's all you got to do is type it in. Hit subscribe, the all notification bell, so you guys get all this content and a lot more. So I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we'll see you next week for another Cupid's Corner. See you then.